So looking at our Excel read function, we have our series of strings, and the first step we do is transpose these lists. Now we're going to do the same thing in code block. I'm going to scroll up a bit and type in code block in our library. We'll drop that onto the canvas, and my first step is to do list.transpose x. And that variable can be any name. We'll just call it x for now. So it's asking us for an input of x. And that's where we'll plug in our Excel read. So here we can have an we can see we have an identical output to the list below. Now the next step is to do a string split. We're going to separate the strings by commas. And we can follow the rules that we've set up before. I'm going to just move this code block along with the graph. Now what I can do here is define our transposed list as a variable. Transpose list equals list.transpose x. And then we're going to do string dot split transposed list, comma. And then I'll do a quotes to represent a string for a comma. So let's see what our results are there. Now we've split the strings by a comma. And that's the same operation we're using for the string split. So now we've condensed these three nodes into this one code block. And since this is just kind of a, a streamlined operation, we're going to condense these two lines of code into one line of code. So we can define variables within code block, but in this case, uh, I just want to use string.split on the original list.transpose. So I'm going to delete this line. And rather than defining this list.transpose, we have our original transpose list here. And by wrapping parentheses around this, I can do string.split. Remember, we have our first input, but we need to apply our separator. So I'll hit comma, open quote, comma, close quote. Now we've condensed those two nodes onto one line. So the way we're setting up these graphs, we're plugging uh, one node into the next. And as we're working linearly through our visual scripting environment, we're nesting parentheses in code block. So the next step here is to do string to number. This is straightforward enough. We'll just wrap our current code with string to number. And I'll do an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. So it's not going to look too different, but we've actually converted these values to numbers. So if we look at our results now, let's look at this top layer of list. We have 0, 1, 2, 3. So we've created a list of the x, y, and z values for each point of an adaptive component. So we just want to focus on the first item of this list. Let's look at isolating that first point. I'm going to look up get item, and we've used this before in Dynamo. I just want to pull this onto the canvas to see what the syntax is for code block. So I'm going to wrap this list with list.getItem at index, open parentheses, and then all the way down before the semicolon, I'll hit comma, zero, close parentheses. So that's our way of selecting the first item of that list. And now we have the x, y, and z values of that full list. So let's give this a name now. We're getting a little complicated with our nested functions here. I'm going to declare this as point. values equals. So now we have our x, y, and z values. Let's see what happens if I hit enter and do a transpose operation. So that would be list.transpose point values. So here we're working through the series of operations similar to the way our custom node is set up. So now that we've transposed this list, we've created one item representing our x values, one item representing our y values, and one item representing our z values. 
So the next step is to select these items. And what we're going to do is call this point items. So our next step is to choose point items. And we want to go to the beginning of that. And again, we're going to do list get item at index list dot get item at index open parentheses and do comma zero this way we'll select the first item of that list which is all of our x values for each point which represents the first point of our adaptive components so while this may be getting a little confusing uh, it should be clear if I wanted to change the y values it should be clear that selecting the first item of that list will give us all of the y values so i'm going to call this px equals py equals and i'll copy and paste on the next line and call this pz and we'll change this value to 2 now the last step is to create our points. So let's do point dot by coordinates, which is matching our node. And we'll say px comma py comma pz. Looking at this output here, I'm going to collapse and then expand this again so we can see more of it. We have our values here, which should match our values in this Excel to point node. So we've condensed this series of operations as well as this Excel to point, which is somewhat convoluted with these steps, into one node and one code block. So I'm going to delete this list.getItem at index. And just to refresh here, in this point values list, this one get item at index command, which is the outside of our code block, we're getting the zeroth item. And this zeroth item is defining which point of the adaptive components we want to get. So I'm going to change this code block and this item I'll change to one. You can see our new results. If you're not getting these results, you may want to try to just plug in Excel read into X again. Sometimes it snags on us a bit. But you can see instead of these results, I'm now getting the results of the second item of our list, which is the second point of our adaptive components. So with this in mind, I'll change this back to zero to be our first point. Confirm that that's working. See it's still lagging if I re-plug in a point there. We've now converted to our first point. Now one thing worth noting, as of this recording, I'm going to zoom out and try to copy this code block. Uh, if you copy and paste a code block, uh, it can lose its functionality, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, but a quick fix for this, I'm just going to copy all of the code inside and delete the code block. And let's just add another code block to the canvas. And I'm going to paste. So if I plug our Excel read into X, you can see we now have our first point, but I want to change this to be our second point. And there we go. It's kicked in. We have our first, our second point of our adaptive components and our first point. Now we could repeat this process two more times and plug these into our final list.create to create our final points for the adaptive components. However, an even more powerful tool is creating a function out of these points. So instead of defining this number within our program, I'm going to give this a variable name. Let's call this point index. 
Now, since this point index is not defined uh, anywhere else in this script, it's going to create an in input there. So if I change this to number, I can drop this onto the canvas and plug zero, and we should get our update, the first item in the list. I can change it to three, and I'll get the last of the adapted components. So let's confirm. Let's go to our last adaptive component, and it seems to be the same list. Now while this is working quite well, we can copy and paste and change the code block uh, four times. The most powerful part of code block is defining functions from within your Dynamo graph. So we can use one code block to create a function and then call that function from another code block. So in essence, we're creating this series of rules once. We'll be using this one in this case. And we're recalling this code block to rerun at other periods in the graph. So if we want to edit how this code block is set up, we only need to edit this one script, and all corresponding code blocks will be updated. That's a pretty simple setup, too. If I, I'm going to clear and give ourselves a new line so we can define a function. I'm going to type in DEF to define a function and do Excel points. That will be the name of our function. And now I have to define the input variables. And these will be the same as our inputs here. I'll just call it x, comma, point index, close parentheses. And then I'm going to hit enter and do an open curly brace. And below, I'm going to close out that curly brace. And the last step here, in our last line of code, we need to say what this function is returning after it executes. So we'll type in return and the equal sign. So when this function is called, it's going to run through these series of steps based on this input. And then the final result it's going to give is this return line. So let's see what this gives us. You can see as I defined a function, it's now removed all of the inputs from the code block. And I'm going to drop a new code block onto the canvas. And all I have to do here is to find one line. Excel points x. Let's just call this Excel output and then point of interest. And the reason I'm calling these different names is I just want to show that it, you don't have to call it the same name as your defined function as long as it's established in the same order. We can use different variables for that function. So our Excel output will be plugged into here. And then the point of interest will be, let's start with zero and compare our results. So the first time it's calling this function, you might get a little delay in Dynamo. It just gets a little laggy sometimes. I'm going to change this number to zero, and this will be our point of interest. So before I show this output, I want to say that ideally, this is defined in the same way as our function. So our results for this output should be the same exact results as this code block above. This is the manual scripting. We create the zeroth item, and we're selecting the first item in our list of adaptive components and creating a point. Down here, we're doing the same thing, except we've changed our point of interest to a variable. We're calling that zero, and that's being plugged into here. So you can see from our output, we have one list of points. And our output here, we actually have a list of multiple points. Now, this is a bug in Dynamo at the moment. When you're calling a function from within a code block, uh, it seems to be running into some lacing issues. Uh, this function is creating a Cartesian cross product. So ideally, we'd be setting this up such that 
I'm recreating a code block for the next point. Or instead of doing that, let's do this, which is even quicker. I'm just going the line below. And I can call this Excel points, Excel output. And then let's do point of interest plus point of interest plus one. And then this should give us the second point of our output. However, this function will actually fail uh, because of the lacing issue within Dynamo. Surprisingly, because of this issue, this original line of code, if I'm, I'm going to delete this second line, this original line of code is giving us our final values. So it's kind of a happy accident, but something to be aware of. Uh, once these functions are fixed, this connection is correct. Uh, it's going to be a very powerful tool. So with that in mind, let's just leave this code block as it is. So we've defined this function. We're using code block to skip all of these steps up to here. And then because of the lacing issues, we're actually creating our main list here from the code block. So to confirm that this is working, I'm going to hit Control-G. And let's right click and hit Zoom to fit. I'm going to put this in the top right corner, hit Control G again. So let's unplug our polygon by points from our original transpose. And I'm going to delete all of these functions. So now we have that all condensed into this code block. And I'm going to pull over these polygon by points. And I'm going to plug in our output into the polygon by points. So since this is the same list, uh, we're ready to create these surfaces. And there we go, we have them arrayed on our surface. And let's confirm one more time that our adaptive components are working correctly. Move over our adaptive components. And now we'll go to split screen. And I'll plug in our code block to our points. So now we have our adaptive components arrayed in our Revit project, all referencing this original code block. So now zooming out, we can get rid of this original code block. That was the code block without the definition defined. And now we have this one definition, which is controlling all of the code blocks whenever we call this definition. So maximizing Dynamo. You can imagine a very elegant layout to a Dynamo node in which you have one code block defining a series of definitions as this master code block, and then a series of code blocks below, which are calling to those definitions in your graph.